Good afternoon and good afternoon to everybody from Pinhole Quilting. This afternoon I am here on my Todd, on my Todd. And I'm just going to turn the volume down on this in case I get feedback. Um, ba -ba -ba no volume, that's good. Let's see. My video. Let's see if it works. Okay, so I'm hoping, excuse me why I fiddle with this. Pete's normally doing this bit. Okay, can't seem to get it up. Right, let's just proceed. Happening now. I'm hoping it just goes to it. That'd be bonus, wouldn't it? Anyway, I hope everybody's really well and that you're enjoying the week. It's definitely feeling more and more aut autumnal. Um, oh, Facebook is such a joy, such a joy. So what are we going to be talking about this week? And that says happening now. So I should just, you'd think I could just click on it, wouldn't you? Like anybody else, but no. <sighs> Happening now. Ooh. Okay, discussion. No. Ah, got it. Got it. Woo. Great. Sorry about that. <clears throat> when I see uh, John Scott on Sundays and I watch some of his, his things, I think we should be able to do this much more easily. But honestly, it's so tricky. It's so tricky. And I see other people stumbling. And it's honestly, it's not just incompetence, although that obviously does uh, feature heavily from time to time. Hi, Di. Hi, Carol. I've got your quilt behind. Can you see? Wonderful quilt. I was talking about it with um, a customer who came to visit. I had a couple of um, demonstrations this week which were of note. Um, one lady uh, decided on the Moxie, and uh, the other lady decided on a Simply 16. And it kind of depends where you are with your quilting to a certain extent. Um, but I was really delighted because it was partly um, seeing you, Carol, um, that convinced the, the one lady to go uh, for the moxie. So that's absolutely brilliant. And um, I hope that, uh, you know, you enjoyed the Harrogate show, Carol. Um, and where, this is where Carol and Graham, who are both handy quilter owners, um, we find there's a real benefit to having people who've actually got one of our machines demonstrating to other customers as well. So it's absolutely brilliant. So what are we doing this week? This week, I'm focusing, like last week, we did stand-up movable machines. We focused on the different types of stitch regulation and when you might use them. And this time, I'm going to focus on the sit-down. So Dai has a Sweet 16. Dai, you've had that quite a few years, right? And um, hi, Annette, a Brown Cow, Cow Road. Looking forward to seeing you soon, very, very soon. And actually, all three of you are coming. Uh, you're all going to be on the same class. How about that? Um, I've just been going through the menus again. Um, hopefully, nothing's changed at the restaurants that we'd booked. So this week, I'll be doing some sit-down stuff and talking to you about the sort of different types of stitch regulation. And also, I just want to go through how we set up the machine for two-thread sewing and the different types of needle we use. A few things came up in discussion with customers this week as well. So the other things that I want to discuss, I'm just going to make a note of these because it's been another busy day. Pete's not here, as you can tell, because I'm doing this all on my own. Um, the other thing was the bobbin winder, adjusting the tension on the bobbin winder. And the other thing was if you've got a moxie and it's not, you've got it newly set up, You've got stitch regulation, but it's not as consistent as you'd expect. It's a very simple fix. And hopefully the lady who phoned up us about that has now, or will be able to fix it when she gets home. Okay, let's just say hello to a few more people. Oh, hi Raymond, good to have you on board. And hi Ellen, um, we visited up with um, Ellen last week um, on our little uh, trip up to the Wirral, which was lovely. And I hope everything's going well with your machine. Um, and Jackie says hi from Wellingborough. Uh, so Jackie's recently upgraded um, to have Pro Stitcher as well. And Jackie, you will also be meeting up with Annette and Di and Carol, because you're all coming to Talen's class on the feathers. 
So that's brilliant. And Carol, hi, Carol. And hi, Tricia. Uh, hello. Looking forward to coming to see you, see you again, Di. Lovely. See? Bye from West Sussex. That's nice. Yeah, so, oh, I'm going to set up a Facebook group for to lens classes. So you'll be able to have a chat off, off of the main things. Now, I've got lots of stuff assembled here. This is actually one of the uh, machines that we've got for sale on our pre-loved long arms website. So prelovedlongarms.co.uk is the site that we've got specifically for second user machines, ones where customers have typically upgraded their machine, but sometimes, you know, for various reasons, people just want to uh, sell their machine. They might be you know, changing their situation in life and perhaps um, going down to a small house. <laughs> Excuse me. I need to get my coffee. Hang on a second. <coughs> there we go. I can't talk if I'm choking. Right. <clears throat> Hi, Angie from Cornwall. Oh, it's good to have you on board. Hope you're getting on well with your, I think it's Simply 16, isn't it? So, um, a couple of things then. Bobbin winder, stitch regulation on the Moxie. Plus, we're going to do this and twin needle, not twin needle, twin thread sewing. One of the things that we used to do um, when we gave people a, a long arm, gave people, we don't give them away, obviously, but um, when we install or um, sell, send, whatever, a handy quilter, is we quite often go through some basics. And I found this old sheet that we used to do. We've got a better thing now. We, um, and there's a lot more videos. But let's just talk about that in the context of, of doing some practice pieces that I'm just going to sew on here. Tension is the foundation to good stitches. One of the calls that I had this week was an intriguing one. Intriguing because I hadn't really had this problem previously. Um, not specifically this problem. So it got Pete and I thinking. It did. Um, and the tension was getting tighter as the bobbin was going smaller in terms of using up the thread on the bobbin. So halfway through the bobbin, it would start to tighten. So the backing, the backing would have very tight stitches and so the top would still sort of look okay, but actually it was puckering, right? It wasn't laying nice and flat. And in fact, the customer had to unpick it. Never a good thing to have to do. So, um, we want to do everything we can to avoid reverse sewing. So the second thing on this list is ensure your bobbin is wound consistently and evenly for good tension. So let's just focus on that. I'm just going to get a bobbin winder, which is just here. <clears throat> now this is the, the bobbin winder that predominantly Oh, yeah, so Angela's got a Simply 16. Hello, Karen. Hello from a very wet Anglesey, says Karen. And, um, yeah, it's really wet here as well. I don't know if you can hear the rain, but it's pretty, pretty horrible. It's definitely gone into uh, majorly quilting weather right now. So wherever you are at, it's time to um, hunker down and get on with some quilting because this is the thing that makes you feel warmer, right? So what you'll notice about this is, first of all, but this, oh, you can't really see from there. So this is the standard bobbin winder. The newer Moxes come with a, a smaller model and I will do a video on setting that up because I have quite a nice, she says modestly, um, I have a video on YouTube that shows you how to set this one up. So I think it will be useful to have similar for the newer Moxie one. So this is the bobbin winder. When you set it up, you need to get this so it's not flopping all over the place. And you need to get the little piggy tail so that it's over this tension spring. So what I need to do is just tighten that up so that it isn't flopping around. And I can either do that by turning it. I can turn a little bit more and there should be a washer under there. We seem to have lost ours. It's because we take it to shows and they just go. Right, so you want that to be directly above that. Now, when you are winding a bobbin, you take it straight up and through the piggy tail, and then the manual says to go around 
that side and across, but we recommend going around this way and over the top. Now, this particular customer who'd had a problem with the wind, uh, well, she was having a problem with the tension, which we focused on it either being the bobbin case, the bobbin backlash spring inside the bobbin case. And if you don't know what that is, let me get a new bobbin. Here we go. See, I do do some preparation. It's important to do some preparation. So this is bobbin case. <clears throat> let me just see if that is focusing on. There we go. You should be able to see that. So that's the backlash spring. It's like a blue sprung steel inside the bobbin case. And the idea is to stop it over rotating. When you're using the metal bobbins inside your bobbin case, it should stop it from over rotating and causing different tension. But the problem with this one was that it was, it was too tight. Now, what had happened was that this particular customer had had problems with um, winding the bobbin and it was jumping out of the tension disc assembly. And she'd had the machine before I did that video that's on our YouTube now. So I had set it up for her, but she was having problems. And the reason being was that she was doing it as I was, maybe I'd taught it that way, I don't know, but, but that way of doing it where you just go round, it was coming out. So what she'd done, she'd tightened it. And in tightening it, what happens is if you tighten it too much and it's too tight on the bobbin case, it can also still come out because if it's not really flossed up properly and it's not doing what it does on your machine because it's actually coming out at this angle instead of going up afterwards. So we always say go around from underneath and over the top like that and make sure it's going through the little piggy tail. That piggy tail does need tightening, actually. Anyway, then you go around, and from the underneath, you wind around the bobbin. What was happening was, it was so tight that she couldn't get her fingernail into the wound bobbin. After she'd wound a little bit, she then sped the bobbin up, and it probably changed the way that the bobbin was winding. It might have been a little looser. So when she did her bobbin drop test, it tested for the outside wind, and then as the bobbin went through, um, as it approached towards the end of the bobbin and go into 50%, 30% full. At that point, it was getting tighter and tighter on the bobbin tension. So let me just show you with a couple of bobbins that I've got here, the kind of bobbin tension that you should be aiming for. We're focusing on this because I know that bobbin tension is something that can be a big problem and it is number two on our list. So this is my little thing of reject bobbins. I keep these for teaching. And we've got some pre-wounds and we've also got one that I wound myself. So this is a gray bobbin on a silver M size bobbin. And I can get my fingernail in there. Let me just see if I can see that. Yep, I can get my fingernail right in there. It's, t it's springy. Now it's not really springy. If you looked at it, you might think that's okay. I don't mind that. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> I love it. I'm just noticing the, the uh, commentary here. Marianne Tencarta. Pete and I are learning a lot. So Pete's down doing a service on Marianne's machine. Good. I hope he is learning a lot. Pete, you need to watch this. Um, Pete has a very good video on this subject, he says. Pete has a very good video on this subject, but I'm pointing it out because I don't... Did we do something on the Bob intention, Pete, then? I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Um, Pete does... Oh, it's ever so heavy, the rain. Um, Pete does... It's torrential. Now, this one is a, a wonder film. Now, we sell these, but occasionally we get some that are really, really spongy. Look, I can get my fingernail all the way in. I was just going to demonstrate that I could practically suspend it on my fingernail. It goes that far in. It's really spongy. If you get them like a bad wine like this, you need to return them to us. They are no good. And what will happen, it's a really bad one this actually, because we had a, a batch of these in a, in a box. So what will happen is you will find that it digs in yeah as it's coming off the bobbin and this is tight it digs in and it jams and your thread breaks and that is as we know 
as we know, extremely frustrating. So it might, you might be able to do the bobbin drop test okay, but it's because it's so spongy, it literally goes between the wind of the bobbin. So check your bobbin tension assembly. It is the same a tension assembly as most of your machines, apart from the Infinity. It's got the same tension thing that you can unwind and wind up, okay? So this here has got a spring and it's got the tension discs and everything and it's got that and a black knob on the outside with a little dot on it, just like on your machine. So what we need to do is make sure that that's not too tight or too loose. This is the three bears, it's perfect. And then also make sure it's lined up to the base of your bobbin winder. You can watch my bobbin winder video on how to set up the bobbin winder. So I hope that helps. What it was was on, on this customer's one, she probably got it down really, really tight, stop it coming out. Net result was the bobbin winder was way too tight. So let me just pop that back over there. Excuse my back. Um, now, let's talk about stitch regulation. We will, of course, do all the other things, but I wanted to point out to you, I might just do a little summary of this on a, bob, on a blog post, actually, because it was quite useful just to have that as an aid memoir. Okay. Stitch regulation. I really hope you can hear me. Oh, Pete's backlash spring video is the one to watch. Yeah, the backlash spring video is very good, and I'll put some links in when I upload it to YouTube. How about that? And on Facebook as well. This is the Handy Quarter Capri, and I'm just going to bring it a fraction closer in. There we go, just tilt it a little bit. Okay. I think that'll be okay. There we go. Perfect. So, we've got Handy Quilter Capri. It's on our Pre Love Long Arms website. It's a really good price. It's got the second, it's got the second table or you know, one of the extension tables. They fold down, we're not in use. It's got casters, it's got loads of accessories um, and bits and pieces. So just check it out. It's an absolute bargain. And um, the lady who owns it has moved uh, to a stand-up movable long arm. On the Capri, we can do stitch regulation. So say we want to do a nice flowing stitch, rather like on our stand-up machines, we have the ability to do a cruise or continuous setting, or we can do what's called precision. So in precision mode, and we can actually press play on here rather than using the foot pedal, it's got two magic eye sensors here and here, and they're measuring how fast I'm moving the fabric. So in precision, if I don't move the fabric, it is not going to sew. So first of all, what I want to do, check I've got a bobbin in here and what the tension's like. In this, on this one, I've actually got um, one of the ones that's got a magnet on it. So this is a magnet glide, and we've got another video on how to do this. I've got a video on how to set the tension on this particular video. Glennis Davis has finally made it. Hi, Glennis. So Glennis has got a um, Sweet 16 with the Insight table. So this is going to be useful to you, Glennis, I hope. So I've set my Magna bobbin on this one. Pop that in the assembly. Nice, big click. So I've done my tension check. I also just check what the tension's like when I just by pulling down on that top thread and making sure that this spring that's on the tension assembly is moving up and down. It should move all the way up the sort of the upright part of the spring. Take a look at that on your machines and you'll see that the spring has got, basically it releases the pressure of the thread, the top thread, for when it, the thread goes around the face of the bobbin case. So there's sufficient for it to go around the face and then it tightens up and that causes your stitch to fall. So if I just do needle down, needle up, and pull up my bobbin thread and do some tie off stitches. Right, I'm on precision mode. So if I press play, let me just see. Hi Marie, Suzanne, is your. 
Oh, not smooth sound for you. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry, it is gonna, oh, it's disappeared. So sorry. Okay. With intermittent rain. A better late than ever from Marie Suzanne and hi to Sally. Thank you, Trish. I hope that's improved it. Yeah, it was, oh, it's because I was sitting down on this. It tugged on the, the wire. So I can bring my foot pedal back here, but on this occasion, I'm just gonna press the play. Nothing happens until... Let's bring you in a bit closer. There we go. And turn the lights off a bit. Ooh, got to press stop. Forgot to press stop. Let's turn these down. There we go. That should help a bit. Okay, so on this on this screen, I can press play. Precision. Nothing happens until. So this is at 11 stitches per inch, nice and controlled, it's a very fast machine. But basically it feels a little stop start. If I don't want it to stop start, I'm going to go into this other mode. So just check out the screen here. I just don't want the light to be on this. Hang on. Let's just tilt that up. That's stiff. Right. So that was in precision. There's my play and my stop. Manual, regulated, 11 stitches per inch. I can go down to 10 or go up to 12. Now this is in cruise or continuous and I can change the number of stitches per minute in cruise or continuous. And that's what it's going to sew when it's relatively, when it's stationary. So I'm going to put this at 150 to get a little bit more smoothness to my stitching. There we go. So now, if I put it like that, I'm not going to... You have to have the uh, magic eyes covered, so I'm just going to make sure I do that. So it's sewing still. Sewing still. Now, here we got a problem. It's broken my thread. I was going a bit fast there, but let's just pop that back in the tension discs. Get my scissors. Okay, so let's get the bobbin thread out. And I'm just going to re-thread it. So do the bobbin check, make sure nothing's wrong with that. And pop that back in. Okay, so that goes back in the bobbin assembly with a big flick. Let's just cut that bobbin thread off. And when you get a thread break, yes, this is live. Uh, when you get a thread break, examine the end that's broken and just see if you can see what the cause might be. I did go a bit mad. Trouble with demoing how to do things. Sometimes you sort of over egg. But I can see from this, it's actually, it has actually frayed it. Now, fraying can be so many different things and don't jump to, to conclusions sometimes people think oh it's my timing out but your timing sh really shouldn't be out unless you hit something or broken a needle so let's just do that again and this time i'm going to use my foot pedal instead of the thing. i think i might change the needle if it does it again and i do want to demo two threads anyway for those people who are watching for oh i think i can hear it yeah, oh, fantastic. So what happened there, 
<laughs> this is going all so beautifully. I can actually hear it change the sound. And as soon as it changed that sound, I knew I was getting a bird's nest on the back because it's popped out of these, these tension discs. And I think I can see what the issue is. Okay. So there's a little... This is something that we might pick up if we were to, to um, check out a machine. But if that's doing... If it's having that kind of problem, some ways around it. There's a... This here is sometimes moved over to the far right. And that means that it's too far over. And that isn't the case here. But what it could be is... That's better. Let's just have that another go on that. Let me just see what my tension's like on the back. The tension was pretty much perfect until disaster struck and I could hear it popped out of the tension discs. Okay. Now, if it's doing that on a regular basis, and we did have this when we went up to um, uh, Manchester Metropolitan University, is if you're using quite slick threads, I'm not saying Glide is particularly slick, but if you are doing that, then using glide thread and it's coming out, you can take this around the tension assembly twice in a way, a little bit like we did with the bobbin winder. And that will stop it from coming out. Now, I'm not saying do that every time, but let's just stay with that and see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, eh? It's worth experimenting with your machine. And you're probably thinking, how did you make it do all these things in just a short session? And I would say, oh, just luck, just luck. Now, thread it through your needle just by going, finger behind the needle, go down the groove and pop it in like that really quick to thread these lovely industrial needles. So let's just try that one more time with feeling. <clears throat> okay, tell you the tie-offs. And we're going to listen for that sound. I'm going to listen for that sound now. And let's just see if we need to release the top tension a bit. We do, because it's got double round. There we go. Do a bit more. That's better. Okay, so we've got there now. So what have I done so far? Apart from think, why did I decide to do this demonstration today? Um, I would like to show you the different types of stitch regulation on the sit-down machine, not dissimilar to the stand-ups, because on the Capri, we've got stitches per minute. So I've got it set at 150, 12 stitches per inch. Just going to let that off a little bit more until I've got like a really nice stitch. And I've got nothing showing on the back. And that's a nice stitch on the top. There we go. So on this stitch, we've got a little pause that enables us to have a proper star or point. It's going at 150 when I pause, like that. And what we also want to do is say, okay, well, say I sew a bit quicker than that. I might want it at 250. It does really depend on your sewing style. So now it's 250. Oh, it's broken my knee. So I think this thread definitely needs, sorry, this needle needs changing. What I'm going to do now, rather than just doing that, I'm going to get my needle out for a twin needle situation, sorry, twin thread situation. We sell these in packs of 19 and 21, which is really handy. So these are great for playing with your two threads through one needle. So we need to change to a bigger needle. I'm gonna to change to this one. Let me change the 21 slash 130. It's a big, big needle. And I'm also gonna have a look at this needle to see why it was breaking because I think it's probably the needle. Okay, it is a bit blunt. 
All right, that's okay then. Right, so let's put the new needle in. If you have problems like that and it's definitely breaking down at the needle, that's the first place to start. It could be that there's some thread caught in the um, assembly. Again, we've got a, a nice little video on how to deal with that. Um, now, putting your needle in, make sure that it's in straight. We've got the option of having magnets to do that. And I'm just going to use the old needle. So this is another way you can do it. You can put your needle in the eye and then just make sure it's all the way up. There's a, a sight hole to the left which tells you whether you've got any daylight in that section there. And if you have, it will totally change the timing on the machine. The timing being the way and the, the point at which the hook goes behind the needle. By having the, the, um, the needle at a different point, it will of course change that. So I'm just gonna unthread this. Here's our second thread, beautiful pink thread. Through that at the back here, so there's my pink thread. I've gone up to the here. Put that back down again. And through this one, this guide, I'm going to put it through the same guides as the purple one. Bear in mind, if you use a different, really different types of thread, one slick thread and one really not, uh, it can, it may not work. So two similar threads is probably the best way to do it. So we're going to thread these up together. Make sure it's gone through that tension assembly. Bum, bum, bum. Let me turn that so that I've got the right tension because I've only got it once around this time. Now you can thread one and then thread the other or you can try and do them at the same time. Up to you. It's those two through that bit. So I'm now testing that tension. Feels fairly tight. Through the little piggy tail and then to the front of the machine. Through the little guide above your needle I hope you can see this okay put a little bit more light on it actually so it's not easy to see whether you'll be able to see this properly and then thread the needle it's a chunky old needle this one just going to trim those ends You can do this on a number of the other machines and I know, I'm pretty sure that Carol said that she'd done it on the Moxie. She'd rigged up a way of getting a second spool holder. Um, I think that's what it was Carol that told me that at Festival of Quilts. And, and yes, it's possible to do, but on the others you've actually got, like on the Amara, you've got two spool holders. If you've got a FAF power quilter, let me just see if that's running. If you've got a fast power quilter, you've actually got four. Now, what you want to make sure is that these are running at the same speed, because I can see that there's one that's slightly ahead of the other. I'm just going to pull that through, through the tensions disc, so that it's actually running at the same speed. So just check it before you start stitching with it live on Facebook. <clears throat> Right, I have to thread that again. See how much thread I've got it. Da -da. Right, through here. I'm going to use a, um, a manual stitch for this. I'm not going to use stitch regulation. So this is our third method. And I'm going to show you one I did earlier after I've done this. Right, so needle down, needle up, pull up your bobbin thread, <clears throat> a 
and secure it. Some securing stitches. At this point, you need to get a feel for whether your tension is completely off. You will hear it. You will hear it making a funny noise. I'm, it'll sound like it's catching. So I'm reason I'm doing it in manual so I can really just check whether this is working. So it looks to me like the top is too tight, so I'm going to reduce the tension. Yep, still too tight. Okay. Now you can do this as you're going along. So as I'm sewing along, so it's perfect on the back and it's a little tight on the top. Yeah, still too tight. But yeah, you can do this. You can do this on a, a stand-up machine. Just literally be sewing and just changing it as you're sewing, stitching. You don't have to completely stop and look at your thing and put it to the side. So we can do this in manual mode. Like so. And if you want to do some like thread painting with a mix of this pink and purple, to fill in sections, you can also do that. So I'm at 550 there, let's just go a little faster. If you create flowers with this, do it in yellow to create daisies or letters look really effective. It was Debbie Brown that first showed me how to do this and it, it was a real sort of eye-opener. And I love the way that you kind of, particularly if you do something, on, something really obvious like black, you can make quite an effect. Trish, I think you must have been doing this, right? I'll show you in a second some of the things that I played with two threads on. Well, I just finished my little spiky flower. Okay. Here we go. Hello, Georgie from East Grinstead. Hiya. There we go. I think I've got a bit of work to do on the artistic side, admittedly. That was just a little spontaneous, not planned. Yeah, so Trish says that she's done lots of this. I've done this and also done lots of thread painting, some with single thread. Very good for sunflowers and Monet's lilies. Yes, you can just imagine how, how great it would be to do. So here's some examples that I did. Um, when we got locked down and stuff in 2020, this is actually three threads. Sorry, dropping it. This is three threads. This is an orange, a red, and a yellow blended. Okay, and so that comes through very thick. There we go, that's the back. That's where I've done some felting. But that's the back. You get a few pokies on the back, so sometimes you might want to cover that again. And this one is um, wool and that's an orophil wool and uh, a cotton cotty. So those work really well together. I really like that blend. 
That was really nice. And these are put onto this with the felting foot. There's an optional felting foot for the handy quilters as well. So that was manual mode. I think you do get a lot more control. Obviously, stitch length is largely immaterial, if you pardon the pun. And it will just enable you to really have a bit of a fun time with blending. If you want to have a, a third spool, you can put um, another one here with the optional um, horizontal spool pin. And that would enable you to get that other one there. And let's have a look at the underside. You see, that's absolutely fine. I'll just pop the needle up. You can see that, the back of this where I've done that painting. I've seen people do some just amazing things with thread painting. So that's the back of that. So it hasn't poked through at all. And I quite like that purple and pink. It's really nice. Um, okay, so that was talking about twin needle. Sorry, I keep saying twin needle. Twin thread. I will get there in the end. And that's just a reminder of when we're adjusting the tension, when it's laying flat on the top and you can see the bobbin thread coming through to the top, that means our top thread is too tight. And when we've got to loose the top tension, it's being pulled down to the underside and we end up with a very flat line of bobbin thread. So how to prevent those issues, just in summary, the tension, it's really important to get that foundation. So with your bobbin winder, check your bobbin, um, check that it's not coning. So setting up your bobbin winder in the first place and that you can't get your fingernail too far in. You should be able to get a little way, way in. It should not be rock hard. Do not overfill your bobbins. That's the other thing. Handy quilter say 75, 80%. And the other thing is that we should always check the bobbin tension. Even if we've done the same wind at the same time, you need to check it. Color can make a difference to the bobbin wind as well. So, you know, you could wind a glide thread in yellow and it'd be different to a black. Always do the test with a full bobbin. And when you put it in the bobbin case, just a reminder from uh, one of the customers that we saw this week that the, the, I mean, we did talk about this pre previously, but if I put one of these in, this nice pink thread that you can see, this comes off, horizontal, uh, comes off as horizontally to the right, uh, clockwise, okay? And by holding the bobbin case in your left hand, you put it in at the front. What that particular customer was doing was doing that and then putting the bobbin case in that way. Do not do it that way around because then it is actually going in the wrong direction and it goes anti-clockwise. So when you put it in, it should come off to the right clockwise, put it into your bobbin case, through the, sl the slot, underneath the spring, and when you pull on it, the bobbin case should rotate clockwise. The angle of the slot, and somebody commented on this afterwards, the angle of the slot is to the back, yeah, from the outside to the back. So that's how you know that it's going to rotate clockwise. If it were angled the other way, it would actually rotate counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. But our bobbins for the handy quilters should rotate clockwise when you pull on the thread. There we go. And one lady said it was helpful helpful to sit to know that most patchwork and quilting machines that set up just to do say the piecing the p will go uh, i'll put in say in the top loading bobbins they'll go in anti-clockwise but our q machine our quilting machine from handy quilter goes clockwise q so mind your p's and q's and Sandra um, Duma Santos de Cruz says the Capri is perfect for the art quilter. I totally agree. I think we've got such a lovely machine here. It's very robust. Um, it would be perfect for doing really, really creative pieces because it's such a smooth surface. And so if anybody is an art quilter out there and doesn't have a long arm yet, this is at a great price. Check it out on our website. A couple of other things then. I've got a drawing here I was going to do. But... We didn't do it. If you're doing ruler work on a sit down like this, a good setting would be um, continuous, which is the 
cruise setting and have it at 50 to 100 on the stitches per minute. Okay, that just means that the thread will come out of the work and enable you to um, not be pushing against the needle. So that's for ruler work. Sometimes people want to do um, lots of micro quilting and to, to do lots of filler. Now, if we do micro quilting with two threads, it's going to be very, very different to what we would be doing if we were doing it with a very fine thread like micro quilter. So if we wanted to do micro quilting, we'd probably up the number of stitches per inch to say something like 15 or even higher. And we would up the stitches per minute to really quite a high number, 400, something like that. But let's just knock down the stitches per inch to 11 so that this can cope. And I'm just going to show you what this is like. Let's move those over there. Clear your desk. Do not stitch. It might have happened to me. I have actually stitched a stencil to the back of my quilt now because, uh, before now, because um, I didn't clear everything off. The... Anyway, I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Oh, did I not put the bobbin back in? So you've got to have a bobbin as well. If you don't have a bobbin in your bobbin case, you're going to really struggle to do any stitching whatsoever. So this one is a different, um, very different thread. This is a, um, a wind of a glide thread for my bobbin. So I'm now going to change the larger of the two screws on the outside of my bobbin case. And I'm going to do the drop test. That's not far off. That's good. I can feel some tension, but it's not just dropping without any tension on it whatsoever. So let's pop that in the, um, the machine because that definitely helps. Okay. And pick up the bobbin thread, do some securing stitches. There we go, beautiful. Now, Let's just do some filler with this setting, which is in cruise or continuous, 400 stitches per minute. And I'm going to do actually 11, uh, 12 stitches per inch. Okay, so a little bit of ribbon candy. And now what if I wanted to do some filler in, in some of these? I can just slow down. Because I'm on 400, let's up it a bit. Let's put 500. So this enables me to do a bit of filler. So I've not had to change anything. And then when I want to go back to doing stitches per inch, I just have to move it a bit faster. Let's just finish filling this in. Little squiggles. Whatever you like, They're just long ones. The nice thing is, is that I don't have to change anything because as soon as I start going again, which I'm going to do in just a second, I'm going to go back up to the top. This. And there's my 12 stitches per inch. So a great combination. Oops. Get a bit off there. Right, so let's have a look at that. And so what you've got there is ribbon candy, 12 stitches per inch, filler, and then back to 12 stitches per inch. Didn't have to change any settings, didn't have to take my foot off the pedal, just did all that filler as much as I wanted. I'm not saying that I'd fill in ribbon candy like that, but that's, you know, just to illustrate. Okay, I hope that's helpful. One final thing I wanted to do was just show you, if you've got a Moxie and you've got 
a problem with it uh, where I put my adjustable spanner. Pete, we'll come back. Oh, there it is. Here we go. Get the tools. And we're going to walk over here a second. Trying to avoid falling over everything with the tripod. Sorry about that. Okay, a couple of things on stitch regulation, which I think we covered a little bit last time, but actually that was for a Simply 16. Sorry if anybody's getting seasick. Sorry. Um, this is the Moxie. This is the back of the Moxie. And what you've got here is the encoder at the rear. Just here. It's a bit tricky because I've got a very long tripod. It's when you realize how good a job Pete does. Oh, okay. Sally's asked, what about settings for ruler work on the Sweet 16 with True Stitch? Ooh, I haven't got that rigged up. I could turn it on, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll do that in a second, Sally. Okay, so here is the encoder. Now, the encoder must be on this aluminium track but what if it's too tight and it kind of doesn't make contact all the time what you need to do is with an adjustable wrench just loosen this off so undo that a little bit go to the left and that should now just stay in contact and the same is true of the encoder on the other side which if the tripod didn't hit on everything I could show you. What's quite common is somebody might take the machine off the frame for some reason. Well, we do it quite a lot, so it does happen to me. And that needs to be pushed down so that it's in contact. And as it runs backwards and forwards, it will tell the machine to go faster or slower in stitch regulated mode. One other thing that happened to me, <laughs> this is how we learn, is that uh, this wasn't plugged in all the way it had got pulled out and it wasn't doing stitch regulation. So it wasn't about that being in touch and in contact. This here, this little like a mic cable was not snug. Okay, so that was a little thing on that. So settings for true stitch. We just happen to have a sweet 16 here. So I'm just going to unplug these and plug in a true stitch and a sweet 16. Got some fabric. I think we'll get some more fabric. And just get that off there. Okay, this is like noises off, isn't it? How's that look? Okay. Right, so on the true stitch, uh, Sally's asking about the true stitch, which is this little box here at the back. And the way that it works is, is it tells the machine when that little puck is moving. So, should I get the right here? Okay. Now, I've got a bobbin. That's a good start. I'm just going to thread this up. So, nice, subtle pink colour again. So it's important to be able to uh, see what you're doing. This machine has got the optional horizontal spool pin. So this is what I was talking about earlier, that you can put on the machine to give yourself the option of having a third thread, which is true of the Avanti, the Simply 16, uh, the, Sim the Sweet 16, and the Capri. I'll pop that in there. We've got a furry, furry glide thread end. Let go in. So with the true stitch, it's got it's slightly different to the settings on the insight table. 
This has actually got an insight table on it, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use this here, which is plugged in. So I've now turned on the dongle and it says it's regulated and I've got a cruise speed of 4%. Now 4% or 5% is a good starting point for your stitch regulation for regular quilting. You also select how many stitches per inch you want. So when you turn it on, you'll find the little logo for your Sweet 16 icon will change to manual and regulated. I'll show you after I've done this. If you put it underneath the quilt, you should see a little flash because in the dark, it flashes. Also, the display of the true stitch should have changed from having lights that are blue and pink. When it's paired, Bluetooth connected, it will actually come up as a, um, it'll, the, the pink light will go. So here we go. Right, I've got no idea whether this is set up for stitching. I've literally just <laughs> walked up to it. We use our machines for lots of different things. Obviously we're supporting customers and sometimes we need to sort of test things out. So what's the worst that could happen, as I said before? Right, so, oh, wait a minute, why is it not working? Regulated, okay. Oh, that's good. Regulated. I wonder if I need it. Maybe I haven't got the foot pedal plugged in. Hang on. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's plugged in. That's plugged in. Dongle's on. True stitches on. Uh, oh, I'm pressing the wrong foot pedal. That's why. One foot pedal's for insight and one foot pedal is for true stitch. Okay, this should work now. There we go. So now this is based on what I'm, what this dongle is doing. I need to get some uh, sweet spots. I find my hands are just too slippy. I'm not Helen Godden. She does it just with her hands. So now 4%. that that's probably a bit of a long stitch. So I'm going to go to 11 and make sure this is relatively close to where you're working. That's better. So now this is giving me a nice even stitch. You still have to stitch as smoothly as you can. If I was doing ruler work, I'd go down to say 3%. If I want to do it faster, like I was doing over there, eight to 12, and then for filler work, I would go 15% or higher. So now this is gonna do more stitches when I pause. Like that. I'll show you this in a second. So say I wanted to do lots of pebbles, I'm going to increase the stitches per inch to say 13, increase the cruise to 12, play with that, see if that works for me. No, it needs to be faster. So we'll go up to 15, and that's much better. Okay, so I'm just going to bring the camera around. You can see what I've been stitching and I'll show you the screen. Pete says it's 20%, 5% of the maximum speed of your machine, which is for an Avanti's 1800 stitches per minute. So 25% would be 450. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Hi. Okay, so this here is what I was just stitching. Okay, so did this. This is... This is uh, 11 stitches per inch, nice and even. 
Yeah, and then I went up here, and this is where I increased it for my pebbles. There we go. Maybe you can see it better there. I mean, my pebbles weren't perfect. I find that I, I warm up. I warm up to pebbles. There we go. So I hope that is helpful um, for everybody. Let's pop this back down so I can talk to you all. So we did some demos there of sit down quilting using insight table, manual, true stitch. We talked about two threads through one needle using a 19 or a 21, with the option of putting a third one with this horizontal spool pin. Um, I was using the sweet spots, which are these handy dandy things, which are really good. And we've also got the paddles, which you can use for sit down quilting. I find that they're the best, absolutely the best. For a bigger quilt, I would recommend the paddles. They're over on that faff. And I was going to demonstrate on the faff as well, but we've run out of time. I've been yabbering on forever. So I'm going to say adieu, farewell, goodbye, ciao, or whatever. And um, I'll catch up with you next week on our Facebook Live. Have a great week and very happy quilting. Bye now.